bondage, yeah? Because the interest and attention is being directed by the mental state. So it would have an idea, it would like to go to a place like this, and when it would got here, it would find all the faults of it, yeah? Mm -hmm. Oh, this isn't as nice as I thought it was going to be, blah, 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 I wish it was in California, whatever, yes? Mm -hmm. But when, you, when there's no interest in it, then you can, there's a lot of gratitude for it, yeah? You're talking about an interest in this subject, are you? Well, I'm, I'm trying on a roundabout way, implying it, that you would think for most subjects it would be important to be interested in. Yeah, yeah, but in this, yes, yes. Yeah. So, but in this subject, it actually does the opposite. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. The interest, the interest is necessary in the beginning, but it, it's not the platform no, no, no. as it goes, yeah? The interest is to get in the door, and then you lose interest in any effort to get out of the door, really. Yeah. So mm. just, uh, mm. Find yourself, yeah. and then things get revealed, yeah? And it, what it is, it's surprising to the action figure, because the action figure has a mental logic, a mm. mental logic. So when there's a verb, it just looks for a noun, yeah? It can't, it can't believe that there could be an action without an actor. It just, yeah, so if it isn't me that did it or you that did it, it will be God that did it, something. Yeah? yeah? It just, it just, it's very uncomfortable for it just to be in the streaming of bourbon. It wants to define it and stop it with a noun. Yes? Nouns, nouns, nouns. And so, you know, you'll know the problem from the relief of it, from the solution. Yeah. So if you entertain these ideas and they seem to work for you, you'll find out a lot of what we've, we've been intimating. You'll see it yourself. You'll see that the looking for it is the blindness to it. It's trippy, but it's true. Yeah. yeah? So therefore, what's one to do? You, you get to a point where you don't have a move. Mm -hmm. That's the beauty, yeah? yeah. So the, the system just frazzles for a second because it's... <laughs> You know, it can't pick it up, it can't put it down, it can't arrive there, it can't leave also. And it just, it, it just fries it a little bit, yeah? Mm -hmm. It regroups, but something has changed in it. Mm -hmm. A big chunk of interest and attention has left, has been uh, uh, airlifted out of the system. <laughs> See, the system thinks you're going in to save it, you're not. <laughs> you, the system's failed. You want the interest and attention to be put somewhere else. Yeah? And you realize that which ha thinks it has the interest and attention can't do that. Yeah? You can't lose interest. That would be interest. Mm -hmm. yeah? It's a thing we run into in AA, in recovery. It says, uh, and we'll start again when the people come. Mm -hmm. We have a statement that's really important. It says, uh, you have to quit playing God which implies that there's something that is playing God, obviously. Because what, you know, if there was no one playing God, what do you mean? But so there, it implies there's something playing God and quit it. And they go give you a great reason it doesn't work. <laughs> so you should have enough evidence to come to that conclusion when the mental state's been playing God. You can look at your life and it would be a, it would be a, a nice way of saying it, it doesn't work. I mean, it hasn't worked out well. Mm. <laughs> that well. So, <laughs> so you have to quit playing God. It so makes sense, yeah? But unfortunately, or fortunately, because it can, it can serve you both ways. It can serve you both ways. You can't lose here, really. Either you're going to get down to the causes of the misery, or you're going to be in the act of dreaming yourself out of the dreaming. You can't lose. Yeah, that's the beauty of it. So, all right. So you got to quit playing God. It doesn't work. But what happens if that which is playing God tries to quit playing God? Wouldn't that be playing God? Yeah. Ad infinitum. Yeah. So every time it attempts to quit playing God, that's God playing. So how how can it follow the directive? Quit playing God. Yeah. Because that directive isn't to that which is playing God. It's to us. Yeah? You may want to call it God, 
it's trying to go to God and telling God uh, there's something that's playing God. Yeah. So when you see you're not that which is playing God, that's sort of like quitting playing God. Yeah, because it's your godlike juice that's being used. Yeah. So now let's say the supply line has been cut, and then that which just seems so real and solid and so fucking convincing starts having a lot of holes. You know what I mean? You get to see, you see, you come to, you start laughing a lot, really, because it's just fucking absurd that you went with this <laughs> for so long. It's just a, it's just a house of cards. <laughs> so, so, so you finally see it, and it's okay. You know, it's failed. So what? Uh, it's not you. It's failed. It's sort of like the GPS. We did a talk outside of Boston once, in a nice area near Walden's Pond. You know, David Thoreau's place, and it was. It was pretty rural, but high-end rural, <laughs> like <laughs> renovated bonds and stuff like that. And so we were driving, and there was this railroad crossing, and there was a big commotion. There was police, and they had lights and everything. And so we rolled our window down, and the cop came over. We go, hey, what's, what's happening? He says, oh, a lady was listening to a GPS. It had to turn on the railroad track, and she went up about 15 yards. I mean, that's fucking faith in a failed system. <laughs> Literally. I mean, she went so, I mean, she must have been hearing. <laughs> and it's saying, your destination is 50 yards to the right. <laughs> you know? I, mean, I mean, there's faith, you know, but the faith was in a, in a failed system. Right. Yeah? This is what I find, like, uh, I like the word faith a lot very powerful to me, because I see faith as a force of mind. I'm not talking about a faith, yeah? I, I see faith as a force of mind here, and that faith is going to manifest uh, by the vehicle it's put in, okay? So if you have faith in a failed system, it's going to produce what? A lot of anxiety that shit's going to fail. Because it has. <laughs> yeah. So when you're relying on something that's unreliable, you're not in a very chilled out, relaxed state. You're in an anxious, driven to control state because you're thinking another blow is coming and you're probably right. Yeah. Now, is that your nature to be contracted and anxious? No. But your nature manifests that way if there's faith in that failed system. So if you look at the faith in the thought system, just like that lady so easily had faith in a GPS, yeah? and then people who say they don't have any faith, that's faith. They have faith that they don't have any faith. Yeah? So faith is before having or not having faith. It's the force of this place, really. We have it in AA. It's very important. It talks about in We Ignore This Part and We Ignore This. It pretty much says, Hey, you finally look at your situation and you realize that faith had something to do with everything. Really? Exactly. So there's faith in a thought system that's failed, and the thought system is of time, and so we have faith that there's going to be next week, and that faith allows next week to cause an effect on us. Really? Yeah? Most people I see bummed out on July 18th was a, it was based on August 15th. They were worried about something that wasn't happening to the point that it overrided what was happening, or it became what was happening, yeah? What, what it became worrying about what wasn't happening, yeah? So what's happening is us, and us can be directed by faith to override what's happening by what's not happening. Yeah? So there was a famous story about Jesus raising a guy from the dead, Lazarus. It was like one of his big miracles, supposedly. So Lazarus was raised by, to, from the dead. But at least, Lazarus was at least once alive. Yeah? 
We're making shit out of nothing all day, aren't we? We're making shit out of next week is nothing. It can't leak into the now. It can't. It can be entertained, and if entertained with faith, next week will overwhelm today. You'll be here reacting to next week instead of here responding to today. You don't have to have any more faith. You have, we have plenty of it. It's just maybe put in the wrong direction. Yeah? You need a new managerial team, basically. <coughs> And that's the feeling I get as an action figure through recovery. I lived under the influence of a parasite that used me for transportation, mm -hmm. and I knew its tree by its fruit, and then something happened, I got struck sober, and a new directive was running the show, and I learned about it by its fruits. Because you don't know about the tree from its fruits, and I saw this was a much more... This driver, the new driver, was very nice to the car, where the old driver wasn't. <laughs> the old driver could give a shit about the car. Yeah? <laughs> now, the car's going to go somewhere. Yeah? But it's going to go where it goes is by what's directing it. Yeah? So this idea of time is all rooted in faith. We believe there's going to be next week to a, such a point that it can override now. It's incredible to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah? It's incredible to me. It's hard enough to respond to what's happening. It's fucking un over, completely overwhelming to react to what's not happening all day. Because in what's not happening, anything can be happening. You can be destitute when you're not today. You will be next week. You may have cancer. <laughs> It can come up with whatever it can imagine, it can come up with, yeah? But the beautiful thing, there is something else happening, which is what's happening. It may not have all the possibility what's not happening does, but it has one quality what's not happening doesn't have, which is it's happening. You may not like it, but it's happening. And it's so freaking obvious. How? By seeing, hearing, feeling, tasting, touching. What's not happening is only conjured through thought. Yeah? What's happening is engaged with by consciousness. Yeah? Do, 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 do. I mean, see this. You can't tell the difference? I mean, really. Are we that out to lunch? I remember, you know, you'd go to work and you'd be there for eight hours. You get home and at about seven o'clock, your head would tell you you had a bad day. <laughs> now, you've been, you were there when it was seemingly going bad. You didn't notice it? Like, like <laughs> nine in the morning? You were that out to lunch that the head told, oh, seven, oh, that was a fucking heavy day. Oh, yeah. I mean, seriously. It's insane. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, We have new folks coming in. Um, I just showed the secret handshake, so <laughs> maybe next year. Non-duality, you have a, you've heard of non-duality and stuff? Yeah? Not two? You got a certain flavor of it? Yeah? No? All right. I don't get it, Paul. You don't get it. All right. Yes, you don't get it. <laughs> All right, so I'm just going to run it by simple. Non-duality, in my view, is two words. Non means not, and duality means two. Yeah? So duality is sort of like... Let's say there's an addictive life and then a recovered life, yeah? In one life, yeah? A swing, like day and night, hot and cold, close and far, yes and no. So there's a duality of interpretation. So when we're seeing here, 
this world is seen through a dualistic lens, yeah? There's opposites, yeah? And then the duality comes from dualism, which is the subject-objectness of us, of our experience. So sometimes you feel like you're the thinker, which would mean you're the subject of the thoughts, and sometimes you feel like the thought about, where now you're taking yourself to be the object of thoughts, yes? So basically, this subject object is very going on all day. So let's say, before you, you're thinking about going on a retreat, the subject decides that would be a great, it would be so great to go on a retreat. You know, I could get higher and I'm fucking like that. But then you get to the retreat and you start experiencing it objectively. So your ass is sitting for 13 hours. Your ass is not fucking happy, you know? <laughs> it had no intention, it doesn't, it's unusual, it's very weird to be sitting for so long, and especially quietly. So now, the subject, oh, it's going to be great, I'm going to sign up for three weeks. <laughs> then you get there, and then the, the, the interpretation is based on the object. And so the first day you go into retreat, it's beautiful usually, yeah? You have the little mats with the pillow, and everyone has their little space. It's beautiful, quiet, usually nice wood. Yeah, and everyone's waiting to hear everyone leave so they could be the last meditator sitting there. Right? <laughs> After about three or four days, suddenly there's about eight pillows where the person was sitting trying to lift the left cheek up because that's all they've been feeling for the last six hours. The other people say, fuck it, they lay down. You don't want to lose your spiritual face, but you'd really like to be fucking doing that. And then, you know, and it, so, so the subject-objectness is the basis that non-duality is negating. Yeah? Now, non-duality is not affirming anything. That's for us to find out. Yeah? It's negating. Yeah? Now, what it's negating is the false reference that's driven to find out. It's basically saying that we're living from what's not happening, using what's happening to find what's happening. Yeah? And because of that, any attempt to, to change the what's not happening to get closer to what's happening actually creates more seeming space. Yeah? How much more information do you need? I mean, when does it get abusive when the failed system has revealed its failedness and it comes on and on and on and on and on? I mean, thinking that the fifth, you know, the five, the five hundredth satsang is going to do it? No, it isn't. Yeah, it's not. They should. I really feel like they should have a committee that goes over retreat applications and just say, 30, this is 31st one, no fucking retreat for you. you know? <laughs> there needs to have some kind of, because at least in drug addiction and AA, there's interventions, you know? People fucking intervene on your life, the police or your family. But here, no one's gonna come over to you and say, fucking put that DVD down, put the book away. No, they're gonna let you keep going and going and going and going and going. The whole point about any path is that it's going to fail you. Yeah? It's going to fail you. That's how it serves us. It fails us. So finally, hopefully, you get left with your own devices, and you realize they're not your devices. That you are actually what you've been looking for, but not as what's been looking. Yeah? And that desire to be there and to experience my own absence isn't available. Yeah? You're not going to get it. Now people say, yeah, but they, you are, no, you're not getting it. Yeah. It doesn't, you know, there's not a secret little, oh, but it, no, it, it's, <laughs> you can't use yourself to find yourself. A great Zen master, Hawaiian Po, says it beautifully. So here we are at this meeting, and uh, there's Julia, and Jane, and Amelia, and Josh, and Paul, and Hawaiian Poe, let's say, would come in, and he would look 
at everyone, but he wouldn't see Josh, Paul, Julia, and Jane. He would see the Buddha, let's say. So he would go to, not Josh, but hopefully through Josh, to the Buddha. You can't, hey Buddha, you can't use yourself to find yourself. And then he would say, you can't use mind to find mind. You can't use mind to seek mind. You can't use light to seek light. You can't use the Buddha to seek the Buddha. Why? Because you are the Buddha. You are light. You are mind. Not as Josh. Yeah? So we, as with the new people here, we're not talking to you about Buddha, let's say. We're talking to Buddha about you. Yeah? We're not trying to get the message through to you. We're trying to get the message through you. <laughs> you're, not, you're not the mail... You're, you're not the mailbox. <laughs> We're trying to get it through. And I have, a, you know, I have faith in the system of this satsang. I do, because I've watched it for years now. So be clear, the message isn't for you. We're throwing it over, hopefully, your mental little reach. Yeah? Or overwhelming your mental little reach so that the juggling has too many balls and it fucking drops it. And at that moment, that fucking thing you're not will stop and something will continue. That's what you are. You're the seeing of what you're not. You're the seeing of what you're not. You're the seeing that's called you looking. Yeah? As soon as the seeing is claimed, it turns into a form of looking, and that looking is the blindness to the seeing. So now you're using the seeing to find the seeing, which is the blindness to the seeing. Yeah. Who would know? No one would, unless you do. Unless it hits you, or you hear it from someone, or something brings you there. Because I'll tell you, I felt I was a pretty devoted practitioner and it never came across me at all. You know, that fundamental starting point was rock solid and I was just trying to improve it, get better, whatever it was. And it didn't matter how many hours I sat, that possibility seemed to be farther and farther and farther fucking away. I had no idea that I'm not being obscured, I'm the obscuring agent. My identification as what I'm not is obscuring what I am from what I am, basically. So all there is to me is seeing what you're not and then there'll be a finding out of what you are. Yeah? Because knowing what you are is impossible. <coughs> Studying what you are is impossible. Experiencing what you are is impossible because you are it. Yeah? You can experience anything else you're not, but you can never experience what you are. There would be, have to be two of you. Yeah? So instead of trying to study what I am, know what I am, understand what I am, with that drive, we're just giving it a new direction, and let's study what we're not. Yeah? And so really, there are no non-duality teachers. Tell me where there's a non-duality meaning. Where? They're duality teachers. They're, we're teaching duality with the hopes that the non-duality of what you are hears it and recognizes what it's not. Yeah? And then we'll see it's been spending years and years trying to recognize what it is from what it's not. It, it isn't because you didn't do enough. You didn't kiss that feet enough. You didn't do 109 ambulations around. No, it had nothing to do with length and time. It was misdirected. You are using what you were looking for to look for it. It's just that simple. Simple correction. The greatest statements are like a sentence. Yeah? St. Francis, what's looking is what you're looking for. Wow. Hoang Po, whatever can be perceived cannot be perceiving. Listen to your head. Its whole narration is premised on this is what's perceiving. Great master uses less than a sentence. Whatever can be perceived, which is all of these, cannot be that which is perceiving. 
just blew up the whole narrative. Beautifully, like that. Clean as hell. There was, oh, there was no questions after that was fucking said. <laughs> you know, everyone's spiritual pants was down. It's just like, this what sounds exactly like I, what I've been doing. Yeah, that's the point. These, mess, these meetings are sort of like a, a shoe store. We're putting some spiritual shoes out. Put your foot in. If it fits, wear it. That's what happens. If it doesn't, then keep doing what you're doing because it's going to be successful by failing you. It will. Yeah. You can save time, but it doesn't matter because if this seems to become obvious to you or you have a profound contrast and it whacks you, when it whacks you, it will tell you, it will inform you it's always been this way. So nothing that seemed real was really an effect on that. It was always this way. It wasn't like, oh, it suddenly became this way. No, its revelation is it's always been this way. So basically, your whole story of arriving gets negated by the arriving. When you arrive at the goal, it says there was no goal. <laughs> of having a story to, I'll oh, get it on the point, it's out. <laughs> what do you mean? It's always been this way? Who would have thunk? Yeah. <laughs> you know? Most spiritual practice is trying to avoid this, really. <laughs> Because what happens? Jesus Christ, the whole system goes flat. It's all based on relevance and purpose and, you know, a drive, a drive, you know, arriving at the authentic one, yeah, as the unauthentic one. <laughs> There's a statement in Ramana says, beautiful Ramana Maharshi says, the greatest mystery is that reality is wanting to attain reality. Yeah? Mind-boggling. So if you follow this, okay, so now, by reality being identified as this, it may see, I want to attain reality as a fucking pretty great noble idea. Yeah? It's disguised completely as this. So now this starts moving towards reality, and sooner or later, this is going to see itself as the obscuring agent, you know? Hey, wait a minute, I seem to be what's blocking me from reality, okay? So now this that you're identified as, the story is you want to attain reality, but that, but the reality equates to I have to be completely destroyed. You're going to take a slow walk towards reality. Yeah. <laughs> the action figure is going to be going, well, maybe I don't want to rush this. <laughs> I think I need more purification. I just, because in the head it's like, I'm going to be completely destroyed if I find reality. <laughs> <laughs> That's not going to be. <laughs> There's certain. It's like a certain. There are there are forces, you know, <laughs> not lining up. So yeah, of course it's going to take fucking forever. It's trying to stall it, completely. And it's so beautiful because by looking, it's very interested in becoming, but it has no interest in being. Yeah. <laughs> Now, if, what, if you can convince it that you can become exactly what you are, it will sign up for fucking that. But it won't sign up for you are already that. Yeah? It, ha it loves becoming. It does. It will fucking, lifetimes, it will fucking surrender to becoming. But being, it's not interested in it because it has freaking no role in being. It can't make shit out of being. Yeah? It can't. It's a, sort of like a, door, a desert tortoise and a coyote comes upon that tortoise and it wants to get some food and it trying to, but the tortoise pulls everything in and after three minutes the coyote gets disinterested because it can't get in and it just takes off. That's what non-duality like is to a seeking mind. Yeah? The seeking mind loses interest in this idea very freaking quickly because there's nothing to get out of it. Yeah? Nothing. I remember when I first 
heard this, my head trying to take advantage of it. I was living in Australia at the time. And my girlfriend was going out. And she said, hey, Paul, can you do the dishes when I'm out? I said, sure. And then she came home, and the dishes weren't done. And she says, hey, Paul, why didn't you do the dishes? Well, there's no Paul to do the dishes. There's no dad to do it. And she said, fuck you, Paul. Do the dishes. So, Thank God. I grew out of that immaturity, <laughs> but immediately it tried to use it for an advantage. Yeah. And you see it quite a lot at these talks, because people want to acquire the attributes of non-self, but wear them as a self. Studying three hours before this talk. <laughs> I was discussing profound things. Like, where's a where there's oat milk lattes? <laughs> Milford. No, there's a whole different ball game. Can you imagine? You know, what's you know the seeker is the sort. If that is actually true, and it is, I mean, it's going to produce a chilled outness. That, that you as an activity can't produce. Like that old faith mind in Zen, you know. You can't use activity to produce stillness, that would be activity. Mm -hmm. See, this is the conundrum. You can't use what you are to look for what you are. It doesn't work. Now, <clears throat> it's all premised that you truly understand, or at least hope to understand, that you are that, yeah? That you come to a conclusion that that's true, that the seeker has to be the sort, yeah? That what's looking is actually what I'm looking for. If that's not for you, then this doesn't work in a sense, yeah? There's got to be a, a, a futility in all the efforting in a certain way, at least intellectually, for you to be open. If you think there's something out there that you're going to get absorbed by, then fucking try to get close to it, you know? Because maybe it's absorbing ability, you have to be 50 yards or closer, radius. So fucking work hard to fucking rock you, yourself there. But when, if you've had enough attempts and realize it has nothing to do with the systems we're using, it's impossible to use yourself to find yourself. It's just impossible. And not to, it goes beyond this, the intellect, it goes to an innermost where there's just, you're convinced. You're done with it. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And there's a, an engine within an engine within an engine turns off. Yeah? You've been trying to idle these others, but there's one that's always fucking humming. That turns off. And there you are. And when it turns off, it tells you this is all there is, really. Mm -hmm. And then the dreaming kicks on, the appearance keep going, everything, da 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 but there's something now is clear, yeah? And it's not, it's clarity isn't based on what's happening, it's, it's a contextual clarity. It's what's always available at all times, right where you are. It's of your own nature, of our own nature. And it's fucking solid and reliable. And it doesn't, doesn't blink, doesn't flinch, it doesn't withdraw or, or, or yeah, it's not like, mm, mm, it's just always available at all times, right where we are, with no requirement. Because we're beyond requirement, we are it. We do not need to have the right size or do the right freaking thing. We are it. Yeah? If that's not so for you, then fucking practice, really. And Ramana says it beautifully. It says there's that presupposing of the non-existent thing wanting to get salvation for the non-existent thing. <laughs> Why, how the hell would a non-existing thing even have a desire for salvation? It must be taking itself to be existing, obviously. So the thing, the objects, must think it's the subject. That's, that's the essence of duality. And that's what non-duality is negating the dualism of subject-objectness. Mm. So the non-existent thing, taken to be existing, is seeking salvation for the non-existent thing. It says if that's the case, 
the spiritual practices themselves, this is incredible, the spiritual practices themselves are reinforcing the non-existent thing. Mm -hmm. Not, you're trying to get out and it's, big, it's, it's actually making a bigger in. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So it says, they're reinforcing the non-existent thing. How can they destroy it? Exactly. I'm putting gas on a fire, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Yes? So, okay. Smokey the Bear showed up. <laughs> Fucking a skinny American said, you know, whatever. <laughs> out that fucking thing and then you have to admit I can't put out the thing. I am the fucking fire starter. <laughs> All right. Beautiful. So you are the fire starter and therefore you're not. You'll see you're not. Once you let it all be so, it'll show you it's not so. All the while trying to make it different or deny it or fucking mental mental negation is denial. It doesn't fucking work. All that shit. When, you, when all that stops and you let everything be as real as it wants to be, it shows you it's not real. Yeah? While you're trying to make it unreal, it's as real as real can be. And then watch. You see what happens, you know? I have a seed assignment temporarily to share this. You have seed assignments in your own world. There's no difference, you know? We're all living in a musical chair situation. The music goes on, I get up. I may keep stopping at the same chair, but it never makes it my chair. Yeah? Yeah, and you'll have what you need to live through this life. And the thing is, after years of entertaining this idea, maybe you'll see that you've traveled lighter through this whole event. Yeah? And then what more do you want than that? It's, procl it's proclivity, the action figure, with the basic standard GPS, is, is programmed for fucking heaviness. <laughs> it definitely is. It's programmed for, if there's a miracle, it forgets it in about a half an hour. If it, there was a perceived slight of 40 years ago, it's been milking it every day. Yeah? If it's, things are going good, it says, I don't deserve this, fucking get suspicious. <laughs> if you have a hint of it going bad, it's the beginning of a lifelong depression. You know, do you want to live with that accordion? No fucking way. You know? No. No way. And then some of us are saddled with addiction, which is sort of everyone with self-centeredness. Most of us have an acoustic version. When you have an addiction, it's, it's upgraded to an electric version. A lot of long fucking solos and drum. <laughs> And a lot of authorities running up to the stage. <laughs> so, I mean, you gotta. Yeah. You know, we talk about where I live, but if you came here and you had like a spiritual blood test and you took my blood out, it would show 0, 0.0000 signs of spirituality. <laughs> I see spirituality as the poison, uh, the way it's presented now. You're, gonna, you're thinking you can make your, your action figure sufficient enough, clear, and better to be a mimicking of what you are. It's a disposable unit. You're going to pass away in 80 years. <laughs> Let it get to a point of functionality and then just drive it like a Toyota. So to speak. It's not a chariot of the gods. You know, it's not going to be there. When you, it's just, you know, it's an expression and an observation to me. It's not a cause. This is not a cause. This is an expression and an observation. Something is expressing through it, and then there's an observing of that, yeah? With the hopes that it leads to getting an intimation of what we are. By what? Seeing what we're not, finally. So we were talking earlier, it's important to say it. We all know there's seeing, hearing, feeling, tasting, touching, yes? So one way we say it in recovery is conscious contact, as long that's how I read it. So consciousness is in contact through five gates, yeah? Seeing, hearing, feeling, tasting, touching. 
And they're all verbs, yeah? They're seeing, hearing, feeling, tasting, touching, okay? So that would be the first event here, isn't it? Consciousness in contact. Time gets entertained, so then there's an after. And in the after, a mental reaction to the consciousness arises. And the mental reaction is to claim the consciousness to imply a seer, a hearer, a feeler, a taster, and a toucher. So when you're a baby, there is life's happening. And then as the brain develops, it turns into life's happening to me. It's an interpretation called self centeredness Yeah, it's simple. It's mostly the stock model. So here's the seeing, the hearing, the feeling, the tasting, touching. Something arises and says the seeing implies a seer and a seeing. Okay? All right, cool. So now, you guaranteed in most days you're going to see a lot of scenes. Yeah? But everything that's seen is going to be used to imply the one seer. Yeah? So I see you, 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 but there's only one seer of all of you. So the seeing now, which is happening, is used to reinforce the idea of Paul, let's say, or self. Yeah? The hearing, the same thing. So this, all that which is going on, all the verbing is being claimed to imply the one noun. It's called the bondage of self. So you're now, all the conscious contact being claimed is used to bind you to an idea of being the thinker, the doer, the da 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 da, yes? And now you live out that sentence, so to speak. And every day, the claiming is like the act of the, uh, the appearance of the handcuffs, so to speak, yes? So we don't see this. We start at the after. We start at the one that has been proclaimed to be conscious when it isn't. The body is not conscious. Consciousness moves through it, but it is not conscious. Yeah? You are not consciousness. Yeah? Consciousness is appearing through a you, let's say. So in a way, all the starting points are all asked backwards, really. We're living with the cart in front of the horse. Yeah? That which came after, like Ramana says it beautifully, there's a pre, a pre means before, right? A presupposing. So when the mental state assumes that you're the doer, it historically assumes that you're the doer. Yeah? So when self arises right now, the history of being a self arises. I've seen it. It's just so here. There's the action. The action is claimed. The self seems to be produced. As so as and it, so the verb is the mother and father of the noun, right? Then the noun is presupposed to be the doer of all the verbs. All day. So when it. Is, wouldn't it cause a little suspicion that in the basic building block of the day, it's ass backwards? I mean, why go down? The, why go to page fifty-eight? Just look at the fucking first page. <laughs> the first page is that which comes after is taken to be before. I get it all the time. People call me up, and they 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 heard the idea of selfing, and it's very it's very it's, I'm not saying self, I'm saying selfing, because there is no self. The selfing implies a self, yeah? The, the act of being identified as self is what I call selfing. The self in that statement isn't a noun, it's a whole verbing. The act of being identified as self is the verb that's used to imply the noun. Then the noun thinks it's doing the verb. So I get people call me, I really like that idea of selfing. And then a day later, I've been selfing all day. No, you haven't been selfing all day. There was selfing, and then there was a you made out of it. The moon, the you gets presupposed, and now you think you're doing the selfing. 
That one example explained the whole pattern. You don't need 800,000 examples. You need one. You'll see it duplicated over and over again. Just listen to 15 minutes of a little, you can't take more than that. <laughs> if you're asleep, you'll listen to it all day. But if you're somewhat above a level of a coconut, you, you, a lot's revealed in like 15 minutes of viewing. You see exactly what we're sharing. You do, you see it. Jesus, there's only verbing, and somehow a noun is manufactured, and then suddenly the noun's the doer of all the verbing. So now, and the language keeps talking as if you have a lot to do with, a lot of shit you have nothing to do with. We used to use the example, I went to New York, and I hadn't been there a while, and a guy who knew me came in, and my hair had gotten longer, so he says, hey Paul, you're growing your hair. And I thought, yeah, I am, you're doing a pretty good job. He was, going, he, was, he was going bald, so I was going, you're not doing that well with it. We have this class, and we get to, together, we are grow our hair. It seems to help. It grows faster with others, you know? Well, why don't you come on Saturday? I can go, and I'm, I'm proud of it, you know? I've got fucking the shampoos and everything. But all I've done is not cut the hair. Yeah. I'm not growing fucking shit. <laughs> well, the language implies I'm a doer of a lot of shit I have nothing to do with, and yet you're listening to it all freaking day. You're listening to that story all day. <laughs> and then we come here, or we come to somewhere to learn something, very, very high level concepts, and then when they, we say, Next Wednesday's, Wednesday's meetings was moved. Everyone fucking can't figure it out. I mean, Jesus Christ. You're thinking you're going to study these archaic metaphysical... You don't even... can't even follow directions. <laughs> no. Yes? Start basic. Just see the activity going on with the idea that maybe you're not that. Yeah? And then let's see if it fortifies that possibility. And if it does, the shoe fits, wear it, and more will be revealed. It's just that simple. Yeah? And it's not going to be revealed for, by looking for it. It's not going to be revealed by trying to find it. It's going to be revealed by a loss of interest in all that. That's how it's revealed. The greatest receiving you are is in a loss of interest in receiving. That's just the way it goes. Yeah. You can't pull it off. If you have, if you wanna, if you wanna lose interest, that's an interest in losing interest. It doesn't fucking work. The system's not getting out of the system. Self can't get out of self. But I want to get out of something. Exactly. The greatest way to get out of it is realize you were never in it. That's the only fucking stability. The only stability in relief is prior to bondage, not after bondage. A relief after bondage still lives in the fear of bondage coming back. That's not real relief. Relief is before the duality of freedom and bondage. It's before. It's inherently available as us. So you lose interest in that, and like we say in AA, you'll gain interest in others. Yeah? It's just the way it goes. Yeah? But it's all predicated on a loss of interest, really. You have enough interest to get you here, don't keep thinking it's going to be driven by interest. The interest was sufficient to get you here. Now there's no need for it. You hear the information. The information will download and see what happens. Yeah? If you persist on staying very interested in it, you're going to be the obscuring of it. The more you want it, after you are it, the worse it gets. <laughs> Really, they'll fucking eat you up. You'll be super pissed. <laughs> and if this was like, you know, uncivilized satsang, we'd be attacking each other. Fucking, <laughs> but because we're civilized, we put up with it. But we're fucking super pissed. <laughs> I, I, I understand it. Why don't I get it? Well, because you understand it. <laughs> the understanding is just a feint. Yeah? It, it faints something. It's, it's, it's not the prize. The view is an understanding. The vision 
is what illuminates the understanding. Yeah? The vision is our inherent awareness. Yeah? Understanding is helpful to direct that vision, but it doesn't produce vision. Vision is unproducible. It's inherently there. It's never been off. Its onness isn't determined by an offness. It's completely incessantly <coughs> on. Yeah? Um, yeah. Try it, man. You'll lose. Oh. Whatever. <laughs> Have you lost interest? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I lose interest and it goes too long sometimes. That's why I'm not a believer in retreats and intensives. I think, you know, a day in. Melbourne's intense enough. Why would you pay someone to fucking, yeah? Uh -huh. Jesus Christ. It's an intense enough day just <laughs> at a retreat. And to me, it's like beating a dead horse. I think this is an invitation, and then you receive it, and then you act like you forgot it, so you receive it again, you receive it again. It's like a little dance, yeah? And uh, you can repeat an invitation a lot. You know, I don't want to hear a re repetition of a long thesis, you know, but an invitation. You have to understand something. If you are a lion and I'm a lion, and a lion tells you you're a lion and you are a lion, that should be pretty fucking clear. There must be the something the lion is involved with that's causing it not to get the message. Nothing else could fool the lion but the lion. So the lion is taking itself to be a sheep, let's say. So every time it hears that it's a lion, it sounds really good, it's a lion, it's a lion, it's a lion. But as soon as it's heard by the sheep programming, it gets turned into, I can become like a lion. That's not the message, yes? So then you hear it again, hear it again, hear it again, and hear it again. And then someone fucking gets a little bit wiser and says, I'm fucking going to stop talking to the lion about being a lion. I'm going to start talking to the lion about not being a sheep. Mm. Yeah? I think what the lion needs is a very clear description of sheepness because he'll realize, hey, it seems like I've been in there. <laughs> and, uh, and I didn't think I could ever get out. And when I did think of getting out, I was trying to get out as a sheep, which reinforces, yes? So now you get it. Now you come to a duality. And so now we talk to the lion about being a sheep. And then you realize you're not being a sheep. You're a lion identified as a sheep. Yeah? That works. The other one didn't work for me. I just don't want to hear another person tell me what I am. All you are is consciousness. All you are is whatever. It doesn't go anywhere because you're stubbornly programmed to take yourself to be this. And it's going to absorb every fucking bit of conceptual ideas about what you are and turn it into something else. It will neuter every fucking invitation. It has an imper imperative like Hal in 2001. It's going to override every invitation and turn it into something to reinforce the sheep. Yeah. And it can go to absurd lengths. It can. Watch it. We used to tell an old story about some sheeps. They fall upon an old book about lions and they start reading it and they like some of the qualities. I could kick some ass, you know what I mean? No one's going to use me for a sweater this year. And so they, they share the book and some of the sheep are like, yeah, I'd like to be, become a lion. I'd like to become a lion. So they join, they get a little group. They find old pictures of lions. They put them on a nice gold frame put them in here, get some candles, and they meet and they talk about what it would be like to become a lion, or be a lion. And they're trying to have roaring lessons. It sounds like a pa, but they're doing pretty good. <laughs> they're straightening their hair and everything. Like that. And they're doing, on the premise that they're a sheep, they're doing the best they can. They're trying to transform and become like a lion, which is all fine and dandy, but they're a lion. Yeah? They're a lion. All the lion doesn't, the lion doesn't need to become a lion. It just has to see it's not the sheep. It's like the old story, the, uh, an old Indian story. There's a, a young lion and the mother, and the mother gets killed, and the young lion is, is uh, roaming around, doesn't know what's going on. 
he comes he comes across this herd of sheep, and it looks he looks at the sheep and he starts moving towards the sheep. Now the sheep knows it's a lion, and they get a little worried. But then they realize it doesn't even know it's a fucking lion. So the little lion, and they ingratiate it into the herd. And it's trying to be a good sheep, you know, it's chewing cud and shit. It's not working well. It's looking, it's looking at other sheep, you know. <laughs> but, you know, it's doing the best it can because it doesn't, can't entertain any other possibility. It's a sheep, you know. So then it meets another sheep and they get, it become, they start, they have kids, and the kids look a little strange, but they fucking rationalize that. And then he becomes a big elder in the sheep herd, and he's, but he's feeling pretty dissatisfied, you know? And then suddenly, he, they're, they're, you know, they're fucking chewing cut on the savanna, and then this big old lion shows up, and the old lion starts chasing the herd. And it sees on the corner of the eye this young lion, and it thinks it's joining the hunt, but it realizes it's running with the sheep. So it fears off, and it grabs the young lion, the young lion rolls on its back, looks at the old lion, goes, oh, lion, please don't eat me, I'm just a humble sheep. The lion's a little fucking confused, so he grabs it and drags it over to the water hole, puts both their heads out, the young lion sees its reflection, right? the old lion's reflection, gets it, yeah? Bam, all like that. And then the old lion goes roar, and it roars like that. It doesn't have to take three months of roaring lessons. <laughs> it, was, it was an innate ability that was, un, it was an unsuspecting in a resource. Mm. Because it was unsuspecting as long as it was identified as the sheep. It was obvious when it, when it realized it wasn't a sheep, it had all the lion qualities, and it always had all the lion qualities. They weren't newly found or acquired, and they had never been lost. There was just a mistake. It was in the act of being identified as what it's not. And now it's come to such an absurd length with many of us that we're using what we are to try to find what we are. And a great master, Hang Po, comes and tries to save us that. You can't use the Buddha to seek the Buddha. Do you think he would have said that to anyone who wasn't the Buddha? That message is only appropriate to the Buddha. You can't use yourself to find yourself. You can't use mind, big mind, to find mind. Why? Because you're mind. If you were anything else, you could use the Buddha to seek the Buddha. But you're the Buddha. That's the essence of non-duality. If you don't agree with that, that's the essence of it. The, the assumption of non-duality is that it feels like it could possibly be so that you are what you're looking for, literally. That you, the seeker, is the sort. Yeah? Like, that's it. If you're not there, do what you're doing. It'll bring you there, and then hopefully you'll hear it then, and you'll have the ears to hear it, because you'll be fucking burnt out trying to become like a lion. Really? Jesus Christ. It's exhausting to try to be what you already are. <laughs> it is. You know, it's, that's an unbelievable. It's like, it's like, you know, Benicio del Toro trying to act like Benicio del Toro. He's Benicio del Toro. <laughs> Obscure fucking actors. <laughs> Who I like, yeah. So, yeah, that's. Um, I would never do three talks a day, ever. No, because there's a point that it's abusive. <laughs> I'm serious. If you if if it hasn't, I know it's been received, and I'm not wait. I'm not gonna think I'm gonna break you down as what you're not. I don't give a shit about what you're not. I don't. I hope it never gets this message. It will be better off. I'll be better off, and anyone who lives with that person will be better off if it never gets this message, yeah? So, yeah, I think I did a good job. <laughs> <laughs> so, you have any questions? Yeah, we can go on, ask questions. Of course, the course. Golden oldies. Oh, the course, miracles, <laughs> yeah, let me. <laughs> you ever hear of the course of miracles? I was gonna read something which I lost complete interest in. But let me rip this on, because this to me is pure negation. That's what I love, yes? He's completely talking about the sheep to the lion. 
doesn't mention the quality of the line anywhere, basically. He's talking all about cheapness. Yeah. So it goes like this. It's, uh, if you're interested in the page, it, the court, does anyone know, everyone knows the Course of Miracles? Yeah. Yes, all right, so good. The first sentence, I don't know what he's talking about. So he says, yet we have heard a very similar description earlier. I guess he was describing what you're not, yeah? Yet we have heard a, uh, a similar description earlier, but it was not of you. This is the whole direction to me. It was not of you, yeah? That's the point, is to recognize it by its description that you are not it. <laughs> it says, but still, this strange idea, which is being like a long-lasting, independent, separate entity, right? this idea of being the doer, the thinker, the feeler, yeah? this strange idea, which it does accurately describe, you think is you. Exactly. Yeah? So the system thinks it's the system. Yeah? So thought isn't going to get you out of thought. Thought isn't going to get you out of the thinker. No fucking way. Yeah. Reason would tell you, or you could say wisdom would tell you, that the world you see through eyes that are not yours, yeah, must make no sense to you. So these eyes see, these eyes, like the Course of Miracles would say, this place is a projection, yeah, and then it's perceived. So the dreaming that we are is not a thingness, is dreaming, and then the dreaming identified as the dreamt sees the projection as a reality, so it perceives it. Yeah? But projection is first, then there's the perceiving of it. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't matter if you understand or not. This is just a, the subpoena's already gotten in. We're just fucking putting some tails on it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So, so to whom would seeing such as this, all right, to whom would seeing such as this, the self-centeredness, to whom would seeing such as this send back its messages? Surely not you. What? So what's, the narrative is talking to its own making, yeah? It's yapping to itself to reinforce itself. What it says, what you are, has, does not understand. It makes no fucking sense whatsoever. Surely not you whose sight is wholly independent of the eyes that look upon the world. So your sight is not these, right? Let's call it awareness. Mm -hmm. Which is wholly independent of these eyes that see this world. Surely not you, whose sight is wholly dependent of the eyes that see the, upon this world. If this is not your vision, what can it show to you? It's not your vision. <laughs> That's what it is. The system that produces, reinforces, historically authenticates, remembers, remembers through future concern. That whole system, what can it show to you? It's not of you, it's failed. Yes? What can a failed system show you? It's failed. What would be the appropriate response? Huh? <laughs> 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 right. If this is not your vision, what can it show you? The brain, the brain cannot interpret what your vision sees. The brain interprets this place that's perceived as real. Yes? The brain cannot interpret what your vision sees. This you would understand. Quickly, I hope. I'm adding <laughs> on. This is the beautiful <coughs> one here. The brain interprets to the body of which it is a part. So all that we're listening to, yeah, is, it being inter is an interpretation of the brain yeah? That infers the whole story to the body of which it is a part. Mm -hmm. So the brain remembers you as a body, thinks of you as a body, worries about you as a body, yet you're not a body. 
you got to see something could be off there. Yeah? The brain interprets to the body of which it is a part. So it, the brain's collating all this information it's taking in is interpreting it to the body. So instead of life is happening, life's happening to me as a body. And so if you go to a class for three days and chant, I'm not a body, the only thing that would do that is a body. Mm -hmm. The only thing that wants to get out of a body is a body. So when I'm chanting, I'm not a body for three days, it's reinforcing me as a body. Because <laughs> it's the body identification going, I'm not a body, I'm not a body, I'm not a... Oh, yeah, you are. You're a body. <laughs> I mean, you can't fucking win. And then you go, well, wait a minute, it didn't work in three days, maybe in two weeks. I'm not a... No, it won't. <laughs> Mass and time and amount isn't going to change it. Yeah? It's a mistake. Admit the mistake. You've had enough examples already. It's, it's past the point of critical abuse. Really. <laughs> Just sit with the information and let something else shuffle the cards and see how they play out. And then just respond in kind. Yeah? I had it happen to me all at once concerning being driven by addiction. I got struck sober as if it was the difference between day and night. I was just sitting there trying to figure out how to get someone else's money so I could get high and drinking whatever I could until I could get high. Yeah. And then something intervened on that daily routine and downloaded, bypassed the head, because nothing got through there, went to what they call in recovery the innermost, and it was like a CNN news flash, just a headline, no story, and the headline was, I'm fucked. And it was as clear as day, and then the next caption was, and I'm not managerial quality. Yeah? So it finally showed me the futility of the system that was running the show through the identification with it. Yeah? Because every time it showed up, I called it me. It had caught Blanche access to everything. Every time I could recognize it as a foreign installment or as a parasite, I called it me. So basically, it was living as me. And even to the point, I was trying to be free as it. This is what happened. This occurred, whammo, those statements saying they've never come up for review ever since. They're never debated every year. And I found out I had an ability which I didn't know, which is I can be convinced. And I was convinced by that grace that this system... See, my idea of being was, equa was equated to going and getting and arriving. And it was clear that this vehicle of going and getting and arriving wasn't capable of going and getting and arriving. Maybe going, but not arriving. Yeah? And it was a very, very fucking rude, and a very, to it, it was a very, very collapsing event. Because it lives on hope and fucking relevance. And it was shown to be irrelevant and hopeless. And that was flipped. Now, a few years later, I'm looking at this book we have in AA called The Big Book because I have the privilege of sharing this a workshop on one of the main steps in the program, step four, which is an inventory. And there's a sentence that I've read thousands of times in the book and I'm <coughs> reading it again and something happens. And it's the, it said, being convinced that self this idea of being the doer, the thinker, the haver, the loser, yes? Being convinced, being convinced, being like a present tense condition. Not I was convinced, or I'm going to be, but being convinced that self, self manifested in various ways, is what had defeated us. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So in this little example, we're the us, 
and there's this foreign pathogen self, yeah? And that foreign pathogen has defeated all of us. And if that pathogen has an addictive quality, it's a very, very hostile defeat, yeah? I mean, it's, it's a bumpy fucking ride. So I saw it as a parasitical movement, and I saw that a parasite that's that hostile to a host would have to have an incredible strategy to convince the host not to fucking slough it off, mm -hmm. yeah? So what did it do? It jacked into the host's little system and convinced the host that it's the host. So now it's safely entrenched in the host, and the host, though fucking irritated and in great displeasure and discomfort, can never entertain being free from it because it's in the act of being identified as it. What the fuck? <laughs> and that's what happened. As soon as I saw it as other than me, the possibility became available. I can be free from it. And then it showed, since I was six years old, I've been trying to be free as it. And I was running into a very profound statement in recovery, which is self can't get out of self. And that's exactly what I've been trying to do with drugs, with spirituality, with reading fantasy, with back to drugs, back to spirituality. It was sort of like self trying to get out of self. I run into the futility of it. It would just back up, get into another vehicle, spirituality. It just wouldn't fucking get it. It cannot get that little aberration. It cannot get, it's never going to escape itself as itself. You can't fucking change that source code. So you might as well just see what it is and it ain't you. Because if you're signed up with it, all your freedom is going to be thwarted because you're going to try to be free as that. As it. It's from it. So then I, that was shown and then I was supposedly in AA and then all the shit I was doing in AA was turned into this. Yeah? Because that's where everything goes. It always goes back to the beginning, and the beginning is non-duality. <laughs> you think you end it, you get there at the end, but it's the beginning of everything. Yeah? It looks like you go this way, but you're actually just being brought back to where you never left. <laughs> yeah? And so it wasn't enough, though, to hear the message. Because I, got a, I had a seat assignment to share it, and I realized Jesus Christ what people think I'm saying and what I'm saying are totally different most of the time. And that you got to become an ear doctor because the sheep will turn the message into something else. And then non-duality is now a path. Which, how can, it's impossible. You know? To the point where they're having meetings of how to integrate it into everyday life. Who'd want to do that? Yeah. Who wants to fucking do that? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah. So, so I, did, I, said, I thought, man, I started checking it out. I said, these, some of these people, and then I saw spiritual addiction. I did. Because we put out, we made a mistake. We put up a website. And then people from outside of AA got in touch with me, asked me to speak at places. And I went to spiritual meetings and I saw the fucking parasite wearing robes. Yeah. <laughs> Patchouli oil. And it was thriving in the setting. Thriving. Thriving. And I'm going, Jesus Christ, they're worse off than us. <laughs> and they're having less fun. At least I got a rush from the coat. <laughs> so, so, and then I'd be at these places where they bring me in and they bring a couple of teachers in at the end of a week of retreat. And then I'm sitting there uh, and talking to him about this whole thing. And then the guy, a guy, perfect illustration, he gets up and I've just been explaining the spiritual tradition. He says, can you give us an example of it? I said, voila, you've fucking been here for a week. You've heard 15 people. <laughs> We're always stepping ourselves out. I don't know. I feel what's called spirituality is the worst fucking thing. <laughs> it's in the guy, you know, 
I mean, it's great to feel better, but let's be honest, you know, yeah, I'm here to feel better, far out, you know, I'm here to understand the intricacies. No, you're not. You just want to feel fucking better. Now, you can't feel better by that, but it can express feeling better by something else, yeah? So, you lose interest in making it feel better, and it starts feeling better. Who would have really thought? Yeah. And you see, hey, Jesus, by leaving it alone, it does a whole lot better <laughs> than sitting on it all fucking day, you know? And so you, you get the realization by the relief. It's just so like if you uh, were, if you wanted to know gravity and you, or, and you become a professor of gravity and you, can, you have all the equations and shit like that, but if you really want to know gravity, go into an anti-gravity chamber. And you'll know it by its absence. You'll realize, fuck, gravity's fucking something else. It isn't the stairs I'm having trouble with, it's gravity. Mm. Yeah? I'm blaming it on the fucking stairs at the Seven Apostles. It had nothing to do with it. It was fucking gravity. So yeah? So you now know the problem from the solution. So you know exactly what I'm saying was it by having relief from it. The relief is the verification of it, yeah? You know the problem from the relief of it. You don't know the problem in the problem. That's a big problem. You know it from being relieved of it, yes? And then you see it was your big head blocking the movie. Yeah? And you can't move the big head. That's even a bigger head. So now you've learned that the mechanism itself that you're trying to use to clarify things is an obscuring, you know? It's, that's, its, that's its job. So, okay, you got it. Now, let the chips fall where they may. And you'll know the tree by its roots. In the next few months, you're traveling lighter, send me a Christmas card and thank me. Yeah? It's not me, but she's. <laughs> We're trying to say, you know, one of the main purposes of the course, which is many, is to save us time. We all have all the evidence. We, you don't need any more evidence. Just have a key to read the information. Yeah, it's like hieroglyphics, you know, when they, how they started to figure it out is they see a repeating of something and they use that as a key and it would be allowed to give, oh, that's why this has this meaning and they sort of get a sense. Maybe they're completely wrong, but it made them feel like they could understand it. So this non-duality can be a key, yeah? You entertain it, use the key, and you'll see it anew. You'll see it differently than where you used to see it, yeah? And maybe it fits better, yeah? And then you'll express that, and you'll observe that, and you'll be on to something. And it really doesn't ask much, you know? Like this is an hour or whatever, it's fucking nothing. Yeah? When there's no signing up, you know, the three hours of heavy calisthenics before, and you said, no, it's just here's an invitation, you already are it, then see what happens. We have tons of YouTubes, you can reinforce it. Yeah, and I try to come to places where, because I think it's live is different, live is the best way to go, to tell you the truth. The videos are all right, but they don't, because yeah. live is different, because it's all of us producing uh, energy, like we say in AA, a loving God expressing itself through our group conscience. It's got some juice, some grace, so it stirs it up well. So any questions? Oh, I didn't finish this thing. Hold on. I'm going to finish it. Do you mind? We have a yeah, All, right. All right, so here he goes. Uh, uh, yeah, this is, the brain interprets to the body of which it is a part. But what it says you cannot understand, yet you have listened to it. <laughs> and long and hard, you tried to understand his messages. You have not realized it is impossible to understand what fails entirely to reach you. You have received no message at all you understand, for you have listened to what can never communicate at all, a narration. So it is. It, this is not communicating. It's narrating. 
you have not realized, uh, here we go, and this is, the, this is the activity of faith here to me. For you have listened to what can never communicate. Think then what happens. I would rather drop the thing, you know. I would just say then what happens. Denying what you are. Now, no one believes they're denying what they are right now. But in a certain level, that's what's exactly happening. So, denying what you are. And firm in faith that you are something else. I would actually switch the sentence. I would say firm in faith that you are something else is the denial of what you are. Yeah? So, the faith in being something else is the denial of what you are. So that something else, to try to sign that up is insane because it's really the essence of denying what you are. So you want to arrive at what you are on the vehicle that's main imperative, complete imperative, is to deny what you are. What an insane fucking trip. Denying what you are, and firm in faith that you are something else, this something else that you have made to be yourself becomes your sight. So, you're not seeing, hearing, feeling, tasting, touching anymore, in a way, though that's occurring, yeah? All that's being interpreted as you're the seer, you're the hearer, you're the feeler, you're the taster. So that's what you get. You get an interpretation. Yet, it must be the something else that sees and is not you. I mean, how you can't be much clearer than this as a diagnosis. Then it must be the something else that believes it's the seeing and it's not you. I mean, this is like throwing like 80 dots at once. You gotta get, you know, it's, you're the board. <laughs> That's it somewhere. I mean, you can't escape it. It's like a... Gatling gun, you know. Yeah. Uh, here we go. I, get this. Oh, I must be that. I must be that something else that sees and as not you explains its sight to you. Your vision, your vision would of course render this quite unnecessary. That's the essence of the message. The seeing, the vision is always available at all times, right where you are with no requirement necessary. You don't have to acquire vision. All right. Yet, if your eyes are closed, and you have called upon this thing to lead you, Asking it to explain to you the world it sees, you have no reason not to listen, not to suspect that what it tells you is not true. You have a reason now. So, if you are lacking your reason, you have a reason. There you go. So now you have a reason to check it out, and you'll see what you'll see. And and now hopefully, when it demonstrates, honor it. You know, honor it like today. You know, I mean, you couldn't have planned a vacation spot nicer than this. Uh, and here we are. Isn't that mind boggling? It blows my mind. You know? It wasn't brought about interest in it. I had no interest in it. <laughs> it was really brought about by no interest, really. And I mean, I've gone to some incredibly beautiful places with no interest. <laughs> I mean, I mean, this thing, the proof's in the pudding. Yeah? You'll see that you're traveling lighter as what you're not. It's not traveling lighter as what you are. You are light. You travel lighter as what you're not. And because I don't care what you freaking say, there's an experience going on as what you're not. And it can go either one way or the other way, heavy or light. And it actually tends to, on the heavy side, it loves to go that way. So it's really a, a miraculous thing to get it on, 
the other keel. Yeah? But could you imagine, instead of having a basis of irritability, restlessness, and discontent, you had an ease and comfort? Yeah? Could you imagine how your pursuit of happiness would look if you were content and satisfied already? Yeah. These are possibilities, and there's many, many more. The possibility of being able to enjoy peace of mind and no serenity and understand this stuff and that stuff, yeah. You'll be based on the intuitive, intuitiveness, not the thought system. You'll be rooted in the pause before thought instead of being a product of thought. Yeah, a lot of all these are possible, but they're not possible, you cannot produce them, yeah. You are, you are what's keeping them unavailable, really. Especially by wanting them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. Yeah, all right, well, any questions? Yes? The, uh, I mean, I'm not interested to speak a bit on conflict in relationships. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> Anytime there's a relationship, there is going to be a conflict. That's what produces the, the juice in a lot of ways. Yes? It's not meant to be smooth sailing. It's meant to... Yes? You know what I mean? Yeah. Things... Yeah. No, but I... Uh, you know, when I used to go to satsangs, I used to see a lot of them would go south when the questions would occur. Yeah, especially when it become a relationship question, then the next person would get up there, it was a relationship, and become therapy, like in five minutes. Like the, horse would, the horses would be out of the barn, and it turned into something else. Yeah. This is an invitation, you know, uh, concerning uh, duality and non-duality. The particulars, I'm not a, that's not the topic that I, I'm under, so to speak. Just throw out these possibilities. You know, like we say in AA, if you play a role of being a sponsor or someone helping other people, your job really is just to offer suggestions coming from the program, you know. And the person's job who's asked you is to try them, just see if they work. Yeah? Not debate it, not do this, just give it a shot and, and then see if they worked or not. And if they work, then there'll be more suggestions, and then there you go. And the suggestions will turn into habits, the habits will become the character, yes? And now maybe you'll travel lighter, a day at a time, sober for 34 years. Well, yeah. Yeah. And the problem won't even exist for you, see? That's fucking my bug. So, yeah. So, this is, we're presenting this idea, not how it's, it's effect in other situations. I think this is the overruling context. Yeah? Yeah. And to try it sometimes. You're never going to get the content to line up with it, if not. I mean, because uh, there's a huge, uh, there's a huge samskara in here, a deep mental groove of fucking humor. <laughs> Life is fucking funny. <laughs> and you may be the butt of the joke. <laughs> it's going to, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, <coughs> get ready. All right, well, that's, that's it then, I guess. Hey, we have t-shirts. This is probably, this is the first time we've uh, smuggled them into Australia. <laughs> and I guarantee there's not many around. And so I hope that you take uh, this opportunity. And if you have anything to do with recovery, I have a book that was with these ideas about recovery called uh, Under Arrest. We have a few of those. The other books are gone. So. And those of you who came in late, um, just see Amelia with your family. Amelia, the lovely yeah, lady here. Lady yes. here. Yeah. And could we all join and um, thank Paul very much for coming. <laughs>
the treasurer and the camera. <laughs> She's under uh, investigation as treasurer. <laughs> Some suspicion has arisen. <laughs> Some 